Out of the six inhabited continents of the world, Africa and its wildlife has been the least damaged by the end Pleistocene extinction. This is likely because African fauna evolved alongside human hunter-gatherers, and thus, prey animals were already adapted to coexisting with Homo sapiens. However, the Pleistocene lasted over two million years, and in that time, much has changed. Being an ice age, the temperatures were much lower, and thus it generally took longer for water to evaporate and form clouds. In other words, the water cycle was slowed down, and rainfall levels decreased accordingly. Most of Africa's tropical forests gave way to drier savannas, although, surprisingly, the Sahara Desert was sometimes less arid. Around 14.5 thousand years ago, a change in the Earth's orbit caused a strengthening of the annual monsoon of West Africa, which in turn brought the so-called African human period upon the continent. With more precipitation directed to the Sahara region, dry sands became grasslands, and low-lying basins filled up with water to become vast lakes. Lake Chad is actually a remnant of one such Pleistocene lake, one which was so big it was practically a freshwater sea. Lake Mega Chad, as it is known, was over a million square kilometers in area, absolutely dwarfing the Caspian Sea, the largest modern lake. Chad today is over 700 times smaller than this, and sadly, continues to evaporate. This African humid period lasted beyond the end of the Pleistocene, only coming to a close five or six thousand years ago. Before the Sahara returned to its arid state, there were even agricultural civilizations living there. These people have left behind a wealth of artwork, daubed onto sandstone rock. Cave paintings in Tassili Niger, Algeria, show a rich selection of wildlife including buffalo, rhinoceroses, hippos, and elephants, none of which live there anymore. Another location in Egypt, known as the Cave of Swimmers, seems to depict people swimming in water. Today, there are no rivers or lakes anywhere near there, so it must have been much more humid at the time. In the modern world, Africa has more large megafauna than any other region, this being the reason it's such a popular safari destination. However, there are still plenty of interesting animals which lived there in the Pleistocene epoch but are now extinct. Pelorovis is an extinct genus of African wild cattle, which first appeared in the Pliocene 2.5 million years ago and became extinct at the end of the late Pleistocene about 12,000 years ago. Pelorovis resembled an African buffalo, although it was larger and possessed longer curved horns. Pelorovis probably weighed about 1,200 kilograms, with the largest males attaining 2,000 kilograms. This ranks it as one of the largest bovines that ever lived, rivaling the American longhorned bison. Dinopithecus is an extinct genus of very large primates, closely related to the baboon. Dinopithecus engines was approximately twice the size of the largest living baboons, with males averaging 46 or 101 pounds, and females 29 kilograms or 64 pounds, based on estimates from the molar teeth. The quagga was a unique species of zebra that existed until the late 19th century. These magnificent creatures had a peculiar appearance when compared to other zebras. Their skins were greatly desired and were subsequently harvested for human use. The term quagga was once used collectively to refer to all zebras. At another point in time, quaggas were classified as a completely separate species. After examining their DNA, scientists have learned that the now obsolete quaggas were actually a subspecies of plains zebra. Unfortunately, these animals were extremely unexplored and undervalued while they were still around. Theropithecus brumpti was a large terrestrial monkey that lived in the mid to late Pliocene. It is an extinct species of Papianin. This fossil primate is mostly known from skulls and mandibles found in Pliocene deposits excavated in the Shungora Formation at the Omo River, Ethiopia, similar to most other such animals. 
Theropithecus brumpti was a quadrupedal with highly dexterous, manipulative hands. Males grew very large, as evidenced by a specimen found at Lomikwai, Kenya, which was estimated to have weighed approximately 43.8 kilograms. Hippopotamus gorgops is an extinct species of hippopotamus. It first appeared in Africa during the late Miocene and eventually migrated into Europe during the early Pliocene, where its fossils were first discovered. With a length of 4.3 meters and a shoulder height of 2.1 meters, and with a weight of 3,900 kilograms, Hippopotamus gorgops was much larger than its living relative. Another feature setting it apart from modern hippo was its eyes. Modern hippos have eyes placed high on the skull, but Hippopotamus gorgops had orbits extruding above its skull, making it even easier for the creature to see its surroundings while fully underwater. Crocodilus thorbjarnarsenai is an extinct species of crocodile from the Pliocene and Pleistocene of the Turkana Basin in Kenya. It could be the largest known true crocodile, with the largest skull found indicating a possible total length of up to 7.6 meters, or 24.93 feet. Crocodilus thorbjarnarsenai was named by Christopher Brochu and Glenn Storrs in 2012 in honor of John Thorpe Jarnison, a conservationist who worked to protect endangered crocodilians. Homotherium is an extinct genus of the Machairodontin saber-toothed predator. The oddest feature of the Homotherium was the marked imbalance between its front and hind legs and squat hind limbs. This prehistoric cat was shaped more like a modern hyena with which it probably shared the habit of hunting in packs, often called a scimitar cat because of the shape of its teeth. Homotherium subsisted on prey as diverse as early Homo sapiens and woolly mammoths. Dinophilus is often called a false saber-toothed cat because while its front canines are enlarged beyond a point normally seen in today's big cats, they were not as large as the true saber-toothed cats, whereas Smilodon is, without a doubt, the most famous prehistoric big cat. Dinophilus is the most notorious. This notoriety comes from the long association of Dinophilus hunting and eating early hominids like Homo habilis, Paranthropus, and Australopithecus afarensis. Thought by some to be an ancestor of modern humans, this predation reveals that Dinophilus was active in Africa, but the various species attributed to the genus are wide-ranging, with remains being found across Eurasia and as far as North America. One of the better-known bears in the world's fossil record, the Agriotherium genus is also easily one of the largest currently known. Agriotherium measured up to 2.7 meters, or 9 feet in body length, and weighed around 900 kilograms, or 1,980 pounds. They had longer legs and shorter faces than other bears, and were more lightly built. Their wide, short jaws could generate enormous bite force. Danotherium was a large elephant-like proboscidean that appeared in the Middle Miocene and survived until the early Pleistocene. Although superficially resembling modern elephants, they had notably more flexible necks, limbs adapted to a more cursorial lifestyle, as well as tusks that curved downwards and back. In addition, their tusks didn't emerge from the maxilla as in elephants, but from the mandible. Although the name Danotherium translates to mean, terrible beast, this definition somewhat belies the true nature of Danotherium as a prehistoric elephant. Compared to today's living elephants, however, Danotherium is the type genus of the more distantly related group called the Danotheres. Danotherium remains one of the largest elephants in the fossil record, rivaling even the big mammoths. So, while the fauna of Africa today is absolutely breathtaking, a lot has changed since the Pleistocene. That's all for today. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. You can also leave a comment with what you would like to see in the following videos. Thanks for watching. See you next time.